Stop that count. Why the need for capital can never stop. Hello, everyone. My name is Tessa, and I am a marketing strategist and director of marketing at Idea Pros. And I have Fred Carey plus guests. We get a whole bunch of extra people today. Hi, Fred. Hello. How are you? We're good. We're good. I'll let you introduce everyone that's in there because uh, I'll make you big so you can introduce everyone. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. How are you? Uh, we have Ira, and we have Ty here, and we have Alejandra, who's my assistant. Uh, Ira, I know a lot of people already know you. Ty, most of our partners know you, but not our audience. So you want to introduce yourselves and just give them a little bit of the entrepreneurial background because this whole discussion is going to be what do we do when we're ready to go and when we're ready to launch yeah i would love to and uh yeah thanks for taking the time and so it's a really uh really big part of this is what do you do pre and post launch and how do you prepare for those kind of uh those those feats all these are feats that we have to uh, undertake and so one of the biggest components is raising the proper amount of capital capital not only to get your idea off the ground but then to be able to like actually start to build that because once you're done with developing your idea and getting to market then the real marathon starts and so personally we've raised software money we've gone through development on that it's a hard painstaking process a lot of time to get initial capital and this is capital above and beyond your your personal capital that you put in and leveraging everything you can to start these things. This is now going into seed funding and then growth funding. And so it's a really big undertaking, but you have to start planning for that immediately. And when I say that, that is, okay, so if it's gonna take this much money to launch, well, what are we gonna need? What kind of a runway and burn rate are we gonna need to grow this business into something that, that we can really do? That we can really sustain itself. Well, and you, Ira Hayes, by the way, and <laughs> uh, you said uh, we, Ira is the head of our uh, strategic development um, initiatives, but your we in this particular case is everybody in our leadership team. We, we want them to be entrepreneurs of their own right and have their own projects and do their own things because you don't want to learn art from a guy in a suit. Uh, and so when you say we in this sense, you're talking about projects that you've developed mm -hmm. prior to Idea Pros, and we'll talk about that in a second. And would you like to introduce yourself likewise? Yeah, so um, Ty, I'm the head of the project, or I'm the project director up here. Uh, to just like join in on this conversation is, um, you know, takes a lot of different perspectives, and I think the biggest question that everyone has is, um, you know, how do you see, like, how do you gauge success? And a lot of people frame that up as to, you know, the value of money versus time available and uh, things of that nature. So, you know, for me, it's really about to be able to like manage my own schedule and, you know, still have the security I need, like capital wise, I'm starting a company. Early on, that is never the answer. Um, you're definitely beholden to your company, to the people that you bring on. A lot of people think that the, the business pyramid, you know, is upright, but really it's more of a funnel. If you're the head of the company, I mean, you're at the bottom just absorbing everything that comes down. Um, so, you, I mean, a dollar always has its value, but really you want to find out what that value is in your company because for every dollar you bring on, you know over a period of time what that formula spits out at the back end, that dollar is gonna to equate to maybe $4, $6, $8. And at the end of the day, you're, you know, once you kind of formulate that plan, you understand that if I bring on X amount of money, it turns into this amount of money. So the variable is really upfront in you know, what that turns out to be. Um, and it's, very, it's always fluctuating. So the goal is to get things streamlined to a process and when you understand, okay, I'm gonna raise capital I can turn it into this much money. And then the investment process obviously gets a lot easier. So it's tricky in the beginning because, you know, you, you, you go to whether it's like you're getting loans or investments or whatever it may be, and they always want this answer. And it's, it's funny because it, it kind of seems like the less you need more, the less you need money, the more it is available. Um, and, and investors, you know, they, they invest in 
the first thing they look at is, of course, the, the financials, not the idea. They see a lot of great ideas, but it's really up to you to bring that to market. And you got to paint that vision enough in the beginning to then turn that into reality. So obviously what we're trying to accomplish here is get you in the right position to then be able to market yourself and market your idea and, and, and run with it so that you can formulate that plan overall. But, um, you know, that, that's a lot of hard work. And to be able to turn that into a business, a vision into a business model is really tricky. So we're going to be working with you guys to help, you know, not only develop the pro uh, product, but develop you as, a, a, you know, the, the leader of your business. Since you guys are the majority owners, it's like, you know, you got to rely on yourselves to, to get these things done. Um, so that, I think that's like probably the biggest part to, to seeing anything to success. Yeah, I think that, uh, and, and, and by the way, we do this show for everybody, not, not just our partners. So, um, but while we're talking about our partners, that's one of the things that uh, I, I can see you in, in this. Uh, <laughs> We don't want to leave them out. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we try to do is a, a lot of our own partners have limited resources. And so when we get to the point where we want to launch, you can launch without money or without much money. It's a slow, grueling process. And, and we have uh, several partners that, that get aggravated or nervous about the process that, you know, you have to collect email addresses. You have to try to find a way to do uh, a, a pre-order system and you need to be moving slowly in that process. The way to accelerate that process is to go out and get the capital like, like we're talking about. Uh, and by the way, to your point about companies that the more you don't need the money, the more they're throwing it mm -hmm. at you, you guys should look up the story about Quicken and their founder. And he was up in the Bay Area. He literally went to about 200 different companies and got thrown out by everybody. And when Quicken started hitting it, all of a sudden the phone's ringing and everybody wants that. But we don't want that for you um, or anybody that's that's watch, watching this. Why don't we go in, into the war room and, and talk about, like each one of you, maybe one at a time, talk about your journey in one of the projects that you went through, you know, you get to the point, you maybe with a smart cube, you get to the point where you, you have a great idea, you're starting to develop it. Why did you go out and seek money? How much did you seek? And, and, and why did you seek it? And who gave it to you without naming names? What type mm -hmm. of person? I'd, I'd be glad. So uh, the smart cube example is a good one. I was uh, done this a time before, a couple times before, this one was really, it was one of those that Ty alluded to. It's from a from a vision in my head and some IP I created that I went out and was like, this is a good, how do I market this? What do I do? So after you after you kind of figured out what it took to get your base level, like the base components for your idea, you're like, how do I convert this to a business now? I don't just want to be an inventor on this. I want to start building a business model. And that usually means seeking more more funds because in the reality, money is gasoline. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> gas in your tank, the farther you can go. I'm saying this with a air to caution. You don't like necessarily need so much money because then your burn rate increases. But what, what we started out is some really hard thing too, is you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to continue to put yourself in the right situations to continue to hear no. And then you follow, I'm sure you've heard the uh, three Fs of seed funding where you're trying to get to this next next little level of seed funding. And so we actually got... He's referring to friends, family, and fools. Right? <laughs> that's <laughs> right, at the very yeah, right at the very beginning. That's not just your own money. Um, I wasn't going to go that. But yeah, that, that's kind of where sometimes... And then it starts, and then you have to go to more sophisticated, or we did in this case, sophisticated investors that were looking at what we were actually offering. And we had financial projections and where we thought the normal hockey stick, you'll hear this a lot, like to make a hockey stick so you have a growth potential. And they want to fund not just through development, but through a piece of growth. And so we, you know, you hear a hundred no's a lot of times, like no, no, just like you alluded to, until you get that first yes, 
And then a lot of the no's turn to yeses. And they're like, okay, well, they believe in you enough to put hard earned money. Money is hard to earn. They put it in. And so that's kind of like the, the seed approach is to get to some type of a, a financial mechanism that you can then get through launch and marketing initially. So we were talking about our partners here. Uh, I don't normally do this, but this is a good example because people who become our partners, they make financial contributions with us. We become the minority partner. We get to the point where maybe your seed round had to take you, right? Mm -hmm. We get to the point where we have a product, we're ready to launch. And when you got to that point, um, and I'm not going to argue, you're going to be, you're going to be on just a minute and appreciate your time. When, you get, <laughs> when, you're, when you're close to being ready to launch, then what did you do? What type of capital did you need? Where did you get it? Um, I mean, we got capital from investment groups and for, for Smart Armor from investment vehicles that look to invest in fairly early companies, a little higher risk companies, but that usually have a higher payout. So we sought networks that did that. There's a lot of different vehicles now for trying to get, I would call it early stage funding. And Ty can reference a few of these, like everything from WeFunder to Angel Networks to groups like that. We were in constant pitch cycles. I pitched to like where I was doing my PhD at, we pitched to the college and you're just constantly there. You have to constantly show up. And that's the big one on uh, dating, fishing or raising capital. Like you've just got to like show up and do it. And so like, like, and you might not catch things every time. And so you've just got to like keep your chin up, be positive about it because it will come and you keep refining your, your pitch and what you're offering as you go there and then you're really trying to get growth stage capital and where if you want to go back to the partners, this, this is a, I wish I had this in a lot of times to kind of build out that model to get through instead of us going through seed funding and that piece of it, seed funding is the same, same thing. But I wish we could, could get there in order to get to that growth stage, but you want to be preparing for that growth stage before you get to it, which is again, usually to, how much runway do I have? How much marketing capital do I have? Am I gonna use 25% of my money on marketing? Am I gonna use 35% of my operations and the other 50% to build, develop, and maintain product? Like you have to start getting those numbers really honed in on, and then of course get 15% to lawyers. And so, uh, so I just take 15% and realize it's going to lawyers, but uh, building that. And so then it's leave no stone unturned kind of deal. And then once you start getting a little bit of traction, it really comes like it starts coming in more and more traction, more and more eyes on it. And it, it starts to build a powerful, powerful story because at the end of the day, most investors don't want to be the only person in the rowboat. So if you're of course in the rowboat, you're, you're scaring this boat no matter what, but usually you want a couple people in your rowboat. Yeah. So follow on funds and a lot of this other stuff where people will match, match you. You go get funds from someone, you'll have like a follow-on match. That's a great mechanism a lot of times for raising funds. Get someone that you know, someone to say, if I go raise 250 grand, will you match me 250 grand? And then it's it's a, it's easier to raise that if you have a uh, an initial someone that's like, I commit to match this, here's a letter of intent. Now go raise 250, we'll close this round at 500 grand. And so, there's, there's a lot of, and it's all by doing, like this yeah. stuff's just doing. Uh, how about you, John? What was some of your experience? Okay, let's see. So um, my start into the business world was very, I, I would say, you know, just the traditional sense of having like this good idea. I think a lot of people don't come from a very like sophisticated business background when they get into this stuff. I mean, a lot, everyone's visionaries and they, they're problem solvers. So I, I fit the mold of somebody, you know, former military. That's right out the gate is when I started. Um, and I had, it was like a field of dreams method, right? If you build it, they will come. And um, I actually had this really cool thing just right out the gate. And sure enough, like the customers were coming. I was renting batteries out of um, kiosk in, in bars. And, you know, I just, I, I had no idea like what, what was the next steps. And, uh, but I knew it takes money and I knew like, it, you know, you got to have partners and just like this, just really general idea of what business was. And then 
come to find out as you're raising money, there's very specific places to go for certain types of capital, right? And you got to understand um, where to look and what kind of money you're looking for because in the initial stage, obviously, you got to, you know, just tap the friends and family and everything. And, and they're the ones that are going to be investing in, in, in you, right? They're investing in your idea and they're investing in you and, and they know who you are um, and they're there to help you get that to, you know, at least probably to market some viable product where you can then take that. And then the next stage really is going to like the angel investors. Um, and that, that would now, nowadays be also a crossover. There might be a step before them if, uh, if you can uh, find it, depending on what product you have, but that's like the crowdfunding you're talking about, WeFunder and such like that. Um, and, and then you're finding people that are your direct market. And they're great to have because they are not only um, a money piece, but also a validation piece. So when you're approaching angel investors or, you know, you get it to the level of VCs, um, you have like a network baked in and it's like, these are your users. They're willing to put in the money before it, your product exists. And they, have, you know, they, they see what you're trying to come up with and they show the validation. And then of course the angel investors and, and they're, they're risk takers and, and they're willing to put in money on, you know, kind of the idea stage, but they, they want to see that you have some traction at that point. Um, and then the, the final being like the VCs and there's a whole bunch of intricacies mixed in there in between, but to really like dumb down the stages and the VCs, they're the ones that are looking just strictly at your financials. They're investing money in money and they, they could really care less about your idea. Of course, they're going to do their own market research and evaluation and everything like this, but they just want to know what their dollar turns in, how many dollars their dollar turns into. And that's something I didn't understand, like right out the gate is just like, so I'm running around to everyone just trying to raise money and I'm pitching everyone and just completely unprepared for this stuff. Um, so just really understanding like that organization can certainly save you time in the stages, understanding what type of investor you're looking for. So I would, um, I would do a little bit of homework to find out what the path to that would be. Um, so ultimately for my product, we, you know, I, I shifted gears from that. It's very capital intensive and, and it's a really cool story behind that, but it led me into, you know, now a product that we launched on Kickstarter. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. We had a successful raise on Kickstarter and it kind of progressed us down the steps and got us interested, you know, for some accelerator in, in some accelerator programs where we met angel investors. And, you know, they just kind of see that you are committed to what you're going to do. There's a lot of people, you know, that's, they're willing to start their idea, but so few that are willing to finish it. Um, and I think there's just, you know, kind of the whole, the graveyard of ideas that, you know, people talk about less ground and everything. It's just the fact that it's, you know, you got to finish that race. Um, and, and part of that is having gasoline in the tank to get through. So understanding how much money you're going to need and, and never sell it short, right? Because a lot of times you go in there and you're a little bit nervous about how much you're going to ask for because it, it's, you know, when you're starting out, it sounds like this huge substantial amount of money and you're just asking really investors to like put in pennies because you want to, you want to let your money's not at risk. Your money's not at risk. Well, another thing about that is, is investors don't like to put in pennies. They don't like to put in small amounts. They want to put in big amounts of money because it, it, it helps the company be more viable and more secure. And like I said, the fuller of the gas tank, the, the farther you can go. Um, so they're expecting you to come there and ask for a substantial amount of money, enough to pay your people, enough to pay yourself. They want to make sure that you're not working three part-time jobs while trying to get this started because it's, it's important to them that your idea is protected by, you know, you working on it. And that was another hurdle that I had to get over in my head is just like, you know, I want to be respectful of how much money you're asking for from these people. Yeah. And it, you end up selling yourself short. And it takes the same amount of paperwork. To say on this. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing is it takes the same amount of paperwork for a lot of investment groups for $500,000 or one and a half million. So you've also got to find these sweet spots. Like Kai was saying, know your audience and all this stuff. Know who you're pitching to. But the paperwork, there's, there's certain sweet spots for a lot of things for seed funding, for actually like going into like not series A, but pre-series A. And there's there's some decent numbers and things people are looking for, but again, it takes, and they're investing in three things normally, and product is number three. So it goes, people, 
process product usually. And that's what we found time and time again, unless your product's just kicking it. And then you don't need investment most of the time. Right. <laughs> so if you're, you're investing in a person and a process, which is your monetary, your financials, your how we're gonna run this business. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, and we, um, and by the way, Tessa, I don't know if you yeah. came up during the, the show or not, but we have a few different uh, prior shows and, and blogs that address uh, a lot of these things. Uh, one show, I remember we did, uh, What a Millionaires and Bad Ideas Have in Common. <laughs> And that's keep working until it becomes a good idea, and and it's the people part of it, right? Uh, uh, the the willingness to work day and night, to work weekends, uh, which is much more important uh, to an investor than the final product. If they know that you're working on something that is really in a good space and really could do something, but it's not quite soup yet, um, they're going to look to you. The person I'm dealing with, how committed are they? How dedicated are they? Um, how, how well do they understand the market they're in? And the, the higher those numbers are, the more likely you are to, to get an investment. We also have, uh, uh, I think it's in the, maybe it's in the blog uh, test, there's uh, how to pitch to friends and family, right? Uh, <clears throat> so let's focus there for a minute, because that's going to be the first step. Uh, our, our own partners, again, we're, we're doing a lot of talk about our own partners, but by the time they get to the end slash beginning, they can have a pitch deck that will be really professionally geared towards whatever audience they want to go to. And typically that first step, if you're not going to the bank and trying to get a loan or, or getting a second mortgage on, on the house or something or selling your sailboat like I did when I was 25 after saving up for it for three years, um, they'll go to friends and family. And did, did you guys take that route first, um, kind of near and dear uh, people to raise your first capital? Uh, you don't have any friends. I have, yeah. No, <laughs> definitely the friends and family route works. For the first software company we built, we literally raised money from a bunch of doctors we knew because it was in their space. They got it. They invested early stage. Gave us a year. We had one year burn plan based off of everything we were doing. We had to launch that next year with a marketing budget set aside. It all worked out. The company's still doing well. And yeah, it's, it's also... You have to practice your pitch. Like you can have the most, like if you're pitching in person, and there's a couple types of pitches, in my opinion. No open solicit, but you have to have your in-person pitch, which is very, very few words, visually appealing. They're relying on you for the information, not for the slide deck. And then you have a pitch that you can then deliver out based on your audience, which takes refinement if you're going to pitch, you know. Amazon is way different than if you're pitching uh, like another company. And so you have to have that in-person kind of piece taken care of. And then you have to have that. I can send this to you so you can get a hold of like you. So you can see my idea. You can see where I think I want this to go. And then that opens you up because all you're really trying to do is get that second conversation. And you'll hear so much about due diligence in everything I've ever done. Due diligence is required. So the first piece is just to get people's attention, supply enough dopamine that they're like, I'm interested, get into this like psychology of this stuff because it's important. Once they're interested, they're gonna ask you a lot more questions. Don't try to answer everything. Don't try to say, I have the perfect product that's never gonna need any more development. I have the perfect solution because why do you need investment then? Like they're looking to invest into that growth potential. Right. And so that's, yeah. The, the friends, the people close to you, and it could be a network, it could be, you know, if you're designing a product, industry leaders that are close to you or the industry, just people working in it. And then once you start to tell that story well enough to them, they start and they're believing in you, then it allows you to grow from there. And so that's, that's a big part of this is knowing your audience and then not and showing up. Yeah. Show up. And, and by the way, you have about two slides to get people interested. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna talk about that, they're going to start glazing over. What, what was your experience? Do you have any friends that won't talk to you anymore? <laughs> um, yes, yeah, as, as far as I think getting friends and family involved, I'm always like very cautious about this. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that happen in business that end up, even if it goes well, people can disagree in the direction it should be going. So. Um, you know, I always, in the very initial stage, in um, what I do is I, I want to see 
they're interested in being, you know, having any involvement. So past just the, the um, money portion, like, do they have a skill set? I mean, can they build a website? Can they, you know, are they, do they, are they a bookkeeper? Like any, anything on the side. Do they have value to the business. <laughs> And, and I think it's important exactly that just because like if, if they're involved, it's, it's uh, you know, they take on obviously some of the responsibility with you, which is important for, you know, running a company is to show a strong team. The next stage with the angel investors, they're certainly going to look at your team. If you're a one man show, then they're, you know, they know that's just not doable. That's, that's not, um, you know, it's just not a sustainable Mark, like way to market yourself and everything. So they want to see that you have a team. And if you have some people that have been with you since the beginning, um, sure, everyone is certainly replaceable. Understand what you want to do for the company. They might even be better at running the company than you. And you might be the visionary and the, the marketer or whatever it may be. And maybe they're more organized and keep some things. So to your question, I would see if there's some type of involvement they want. And I find that like real, uh, a much better approach um, and That's then, a good point. Yeah, yeah. A good point. yeah. Um, and then, and then past that, it's uh, you know, I think I also like to prove things out a little bit before um, getting any. And that's just that's just internally. But I mean, if you're finding yourself like talking your friend into or paying your friend for money, just don't don't go that route. Um, they're you know they're they're gonna be questioning you constantly. You want somebody that has the availability to obviously like you know, part with those funds, risk those funds, and, and then certainly give you the space that you need in order to, um, and the patience in order to run the company and get it to a spot, because no matter what, it's going to take longer than you think. It's it's like, money. I mean, everyone hears like these success stories out the gate and everything exploded. I mean, that might be the case, but it's probably like the 15th time this person tried to start a company. Um, so they might have had success in their first year on this particular business, but they've tried 15 times before. Um, you just have to have the stamina, yeah. stamina and, and yeah. the belief system, right? Uh, and that, that, oh, by the way, we have another one on how to pitch to angel groups. I was going to say, we have lots of resources. Plus, we're going to pick these guys' uh, brains a little bit more to get a lot more information about that pitching process as well. But Fred, I... No worry, you're very particular about wrapping things up before the top, the bottom of the hour. So I just wanted to let you know that we have a couple people in the chat with questions and we can do those another time if you want as well. I try to wrap it up in half an hour so I can take my, my nap. <laughs> I'm going to put her on the spot uh, because Alejandra's boyfriend happens to be a partner of ours. Very young partner. We worked for two years on it. We developed an app called Moneta yep. uh, with him, and he's been working his ass off day and night, yep. nonstop. Definitely, right? definitely. And right now, maybe it's not giving him the results that he wants, but he's growing so much. He's learning every day, and yeah, he's doing great. And he has right now. They're doing a test program yep. uh, in Miami, and if that pans out well. There's an investment group that's talking to him that uh, they have $500,000 yeah. available uh, if that works out. Uh, meanwhile, in his spare time, he's driving a car around yeah. and, and trying to make enough money so he can focus a, a lot of his day on his vision. Uh, so uh, it is uh, uh, it, it is a, a hard journey, but it's something you have to take care of day and night. Exactly. And, Just like that. And, and, and take them, so... And Ali, it's an awesome one, awesome. And he, you were in Miami still, and he called me up, and I, we weren't even working on the project. He's like, look, calls me up, and he's like, so I got a pitch tomorrow. I'm going to pitch, and uh, I'm like, awesome. Like you're ready. Like you speak well about this. You're so passionate about it. And he's like, so he ends up pitching a Series A round for pitching at Series A, which is pretty like, your people are looking for a lot more money at Series A. But what it did because he took the risk was it opened him up now to like the pre-funding or he went out there and did it and stood in front of people and sweated bullets and like you're 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes left and you're trying to plan what you're yeah. going to say. And you're, you've got 60 seconds to define yourself and your idea and everything. And it's crazy. And so, yeah, that and it both starts to open up that strategic, strategic money level then. Yeah. When you're, you want to take strategic money if you ever have the choice, like, 50 cents of strategic money, meaning someone in your industry that's giving it, they're going to help you, like Kai said. 
if you can find people that have that are inside of what you're trying to do that are willing to fund you that's that's the best you can have because you know they're going to probably help you paddle the boat yeah all right tessa, Go, what, tessa. what are the questions yes so and now that you guys made me <laughs> go down from it. Hold on. I just had to scroll down and check for you guys. I know that we had a question about a uh, bank, going to a bank to get the loan. Is that a wise idea or should you be looking at a different funding source? Well, I know a guy who's made all his money borrowing money from a bank and lending it out to other people. And his credit is so good, he gets the money for 2% and he lends it out for 15%. It's all the guy does. He lives on the ocean in La Jolla. I don't think he ever gets off, off his couch. So if you have a really good credit and really good bank relationships and you can go borrow money at two, three points, yeah, you do that all day long. But you're not going to go in with a new idea, uh, an undeveloped uh, product, and really have a very good chance to get any, any funding. You might, if you have an existing business and you want to contribute for the new one, you might be able to go get an SBA loan on your existing business and use some of that capital uh, to, <coughs> to otherwise fund. But a bank uh, home equity line, I, I did that three or four times with the different companies that I started. So those resources are available. They're based on your credit worthiness, your relationship with the bank, and, and how much equity you have available uh, to real equity like a home uh, or, or things like that that a bank can hold as collateral. And Vanessa seems like she is really, really committed. I see you over there. You have lots of comments and she had lots of great, uh, great things to say about today's show. So thank you for being here, Vanessa. And Steve Brown, we know. Uh, it, how clear should your exit strategy be when you're talking to investors as a startup? Well, it depends on whether you want money or not. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you the, the more clear that you are with your your exit, uh, the better your investor is going to feel about it because they can see where you're trying to go, and and that can be part of the equation. Uh, in fact, I just had this conversation with with somebody that has an that considering working with us. Right in our very first con conversation, we're starting to talk about exit strategy. You know where. Where are we going to go with this? Are we going to be the, the next Amazon or are we going to be bought by Amazon? Uh, and yeah. it's important for somebody who's giving you capital in exchange for equity to know that they're going to have a chance to get all that capital back plus a lot more, at least even if it's a long shot, if that's what they're betting on, they need to know what that trigger point is going to be. That's right. interesting because I wouldn't think, you know, I think that they would want to see that you're being committed and you're going to stay in this forever, but that's not the case, which is. Uh, you know. uh, well, think of it this way. If I'm an investor and I give you a million dollars, I'm not going to get my million dollars back if you just sit there and grow your business. <laughs> that's and true. The status quo is not good enough. <laughs> if transition point where a bunch of money is going to come in and I'm going to get a whole lot of that for my million dollars. What, what did you have? Yeah, uh, and I was just going to say it's it's certainly on the level of investor you're approaching to. I oh, mean, yeah. A VC is, is definitely one to know exactly how they're getting paid back and when. Um, they're, they're, if you consider it like this, their money is their inventory, and they have a limited amount of inventory to hand out also. So in their within their funds, right, they have to gauge when that's going to come back because they, you know, they want to reinvest that. So if you're looking at, you know, a long term strategy and um, you're hoping that someone's just going to put in money in hopes maybe get paid dividends or whatever, you're going to have to paint that picture for them because they, they need to know, you know, when when they can start getting some more inventory in for themselves so they can put into other companies as well. The longer the longer you sit on their money, you know, the, the less it's worth to them um, unless your business is just, you know, exponential. But typically then. They're putting in more money into your company, and um, you know you're you're obviously one of the favorites at that point. But um, you know, in the early stages, the friends, family, they're going to be have, let you be really elusive. So your exit strategy might not be as important because they're looking at you to develop the idea that you know, yeah. develop yourself. And they don't even know what that phrase means, yeah. right? <laughs> but, right. Yeah, they're they're more helping you. And by the way, that can also be addressed with convertible debt. Uh, like we have uh, about 
stuff going on with 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 our company that um, going out and getting convertible debt debt that converts into equity really can give an investor the best of both worlds because if you don't have that equity opportunity for any reason they still have debt that's due and payable at a certain finite time time level and, and so a lot of times especially some some major groups lately they like convertible debt instruments because they know they can they can just call on you for that money if things aren't moving along in the way that they want to well, I'm going to wrap this up because I have, I know we have to uh, hop off, but um, Aziza, thank you. We actually answered your question already, but I am going to go ahead and put this up. Uh, we talked a little bit about how much to ask for and kind of okay, some philosophy. As much as you need to get to the next level. The earlier you ask, the less you're going to get as far as the value of your company, right? If you have a company that's not doing anything yet, you're going to be valued at a certain point. If you have a company that has six months of track record and accelerating sales and the hockey stick that, that Ty was talking about, then the value of your company is going to be a lot more. And so therefore the investment that you get, you're going to have to give up a lot less equity than otherwise. Absolutely. Just to add on to that, I think a lot of people have this notion when they approach that investor, this is kind of what I was talking about before. It's like, you want the investor to think that they're just investing in your product and what that produces and everything else. And, and you're basically going to tell them, no, I'll work for free. I won't take salary. You know, just they know that that is not sustainable because eventually you're going to have to hire people and eventually you're going to have to. Oh, I think we lost your audio, guys. <laughs> Have, no, it's back. <laughs> you know, make sure that you also have not only the cash to support the company, but to support your staff and grow the business. And by the way, I work for free. Uh, <laughs> I know we all do as business owners, I feel, <laughs> but but we don't, we're not going to be able to sustain it. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much. We really appreciate all of the expertise on that in that room alone. Uh, and thank you guys, everyone who came to watch us, Sonia, John. I mean, we had a lot of people over on YouTube this time. So thank you for tuning in on YouTube or Facebook. Don't forget to click the bell reminder so that you guys know when we go live in the future. We are here every Friday at noon Pacific time. And we will have another um uh, exciting show for next week. Though last week I teased all of you to say that you can submit videos to us with your advice for entrepreneurs. Um, so do it, send them in because we're running out of time. If you want to send in a video and tell us what your advice for entrepreneurs would be, put it on Facebook and tag Idea Pros, and you might get featured in a show that will go out and might be on Fred's. Instagram as well, which has 200,000 plus people. So thank you guys, Corey, Steve, Robert, I mean, Bill. Oh, Bill with Goliath. That is highrisesportschair.com is available for purchase right for pre-order right now. So if you guys check that out, um, Doug, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> so Ken, uh, we have so many people. I can't even, um, Raphael, that's Pocket Rocket, Shelly, um, Jared had lots of advice over in there. Thank you guys all so much for being here. And if I didn't say your name, it's not because I don't love you. I promise I, <laughs> I'm running out of time. I get the look from Fred that's like, okay, wrap it up, Tessa. <laughs> Thank you guys. We will see you guys next week. Yeah, and my closing thought was- Oh, well, I didn't know. You talked and talked. <laughs> Go for it. Closing thought it, from it, Fred. This is a never ending journey. Right. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to be an entrepreneur. You don't get a day off. Uh, there's never a time period where everything is going perfectly and you don't have to have other resources like bringing in new people on your team, like going out and getting additional capital, like going and making new relationships so you can get into different segments uh, that will allow you to sell more and more of your product through different uh, vehicles. So this be committed and if you're not successful it's not your product it's you there's always a way to make it happen you got to keep trying day in and day out until it gets there thank you that was a really good final thought i'm glad i let him do it <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you guys. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.